Let's go to the Gospel of St. John, chapter 10. John, chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not, not but to stit for the steal, the kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have it life, and that they might have it more abundantly. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and destroy. I am come that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for this morning. I thank you, Father, for this time I could preach your word. As you anoint my lips of clay, give me clarity of thought, and help those who hear this this morning, those who are especially not saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Real life, real life. As it says here, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that you might have life, and that, that you might have it more abundantly. Years ago, I remember riding through Elkins, West Virginia. I drove, and so a guy would hang around with me, a guy I knew from back when I was in sin. I'd gotten saved, and then later on, he got saved. And we used to hang around a lot, both of us being involved in the drug crowd. I only want to go detail about how it was before I got saved, other than it was a life of misery and destruction and the way of peace I did not know. But I remember one night we were driving along and there was this guy I went to high school with. I don't know if he ever graduated or not. I know he's a class behind me. <clears throat> I remember a lot about the guy. I still laugh at one thing he used to say. We were in a class together at the Votex Center, and it was raining one day, and you could see all these uh, earthworms out, out of their uh, dens, you know, swimming around in all that water. And I'll never forget that guy making this statement. They must have a lot, they must have pretty high uh, flood insurance. Well, anyway, enough on that. But this guy, he would just sit around. I learned some things about the guy. I didn't know it until that night, but he was involved in the sixth sin of homosexuality. God calls him an abomination, Leviticus 18.22 and Leviticus 20.13. But this man, you know, he was seemed like he was aimless. A life of misery. I'll never forget this one night we drove up to the man. We talked to him a couple minutes and we handed him a gospel track. This was your life by the late Jack T. Chick. He took the track and he said, life. Huh. Life. Huh. Just like cynical. He was cynical the way he sounded. Like, there's nothing to this life. Life of misery and a life of destruction. I don't know what ever happened to that guy, and I sometimes wonder where he is. But today I want to deal with real life, a life we can have in Jesus. First off, I want to deal with the first part of this text. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. You know, the thief is the devil. He is a robber. He is a liar. I'm going to say something. Every, every act of thievery, is he's behind it. Every act of murder, he's behind it. Every act of destruction. I don't care whether they're right wing or left wing. These people who've been committing riots, they're following what the devil wants them to do. The thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. I'm going to tell you something. That's his job. 
You know, his number one concern is, yes, he'll steal money from you. He will steal, uh, he will steal your house. He will steal your car. He'll steal stuff like that. Yes, he's involved in many murders. Just mark it down. Anytime you read about a horrible murder, the devil's behind it somewhere. And he is the ultimate destroyer. But you know what I believe his main goal is? Is to kill, to steal, and destroy your faith. I'll tell you something, a few weeks ago I got an email from a certain ministry, RZIM, I'll go ahead and tell you the name of it, it dealt with a preacher, Ravi Zacharias, I'm just shaking my head in unbelief, understand. If you'd asked me around two th between 2005, <clears throat> 2010, those era, I would ask me who my f favorite radio preacher was, I would have told you just that name. He was exposed for some very gross sins. Sad he was dead now and he can't fight for himself, but on the other hand, if a man would die tonight and they would uh, investigate his home and they would find <clears throat> lifeless bodies hid in that house. What do you think the police would have to do? They would have to investigate it. See if that man was part of it. Or if they found millions of dollars of stolen jewels in that house. They would have to investigate it. If that turns out he was the, the, the criminal they can't arrest him but they, could, they still have to have reports and stuff. I believe stuff like that is the act of the thief. Because many people's faith in God has been destroyed. I believe there's been young Christians who upon hearing that have said, if he can't make it, then how can I? Guess what? You can't make it. If you really want to. I've been through several preachers who've fallen. Even some I was close to. One particular I heard about 1986. It shook me up and really caused me a lot of grief and sorrow. It was like the first of a major, major a close preacher friend of mine that fell. It tore me up. There's been others since. I won't reveal names out of charity. But rather than turning on God, rather than letting it cause you to fall away yourself, why don't you just uh, allow it to cause yourself to think, what can I avoid to do that? Cause you to think, I bear, the Bible says, if any man think if he standeth, take heed lest he fall. We need to watch our own lives. We don't have to fall. But he's caused the thief, the, the thief has stolen from many young Christians. The thief that day caused many sinners to never want to get saved. You know, that's foolish. I would rather be spend the rest of my life in church with a bunch of hypocrites and go to hell with them i'm telling you something tonight we had better i know when the devil destroys a man of god or a preacher i don't think we should use that to cause us to fall or refuse god but tonight, the thief's job is to kill and till and destroy you. He is to keep you from turning to the Lord. He's going to do everything in his power. If he don't use a church scandal, he will use a unbelief of modernism. He will use 
the latest scientific discovery, which has often been proven. If you hang around, there's often a side that can be proven that it was opposite of what they're saying. I'm telling you this morning, the thief wants you more than anything to be destroyed in hell. And he's going to do anything and everything in your in his power to destroy you. The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. He may say, Brother Roy, you don't know what type of life I'm living now. I'm in a hopeless situation. You know, I remember years ago reading about a man back in the 1800s was involved in a drug den. They called him Jimmy the Rat. That wasn't his real name. But he was stuck in that drug den. And it looked like for sure he was never going to get out. But one day a preacher was preaching outside. He was able to sneak outside long enough to hear him. Those who were inside, who were working, they got concerned. They thought this man for sure is going to find it, get saved and uh, turn on us. They beat him up. I think they even tried to kill him. They may have even thought they succeeded. But God was in control. He was found. He was helped. He got saved and delivered from drugs. I'm telling you something this morning. There's no hopeless situation. There's people in messes that look like they're never going to get out of. But the, And that's the thief. He wants you to be destroyed. I remember a few years ago hearing about a man. He had just gotten out of prison for a couple horrible crimes. He had committed robbery and a couple of other things. And when he got out, you know what the first thing he did? He went out and robbed another man. He said, I can't make it on the outside. Friend, that man could made it. He would gave his heart to the Lord Jesus and followed him. Amen. One thing, when you get out of prison, you need to watch what company you keep. Amen. I could go on. But this morning he cometh not, but for the steal, to kill, and destroy. It's sad to say that's what the devil's job is. And it looks like he's working overtime. For as it says in Revelation chapter 12, he knoweth they have but a short time. But I am come! that you might have life and that more abundantly. That's what Jesus does. He came into this world born of a virgin, came in this world born as son of a carpenter and <clears throat> was born in a manger. He came into this world so this, on the wrong side of the track, so to speak. He came in this world for a mission. What was his mission? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What was his mission? God commended his love towards us, and while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. He came into this world for you and I so we can be set free from our sins, so we can have life and that more abundantly. This morning, the world, they may offer pleasure, but they don't offer peace. They may offer a moment, a good time, but they don't offer life. This morning, Jesus came into the world. Why? So we could have life and that more abundantly. You know what he did? He came into this world. <clears throat> he worked for years as a carpenter. And finally, at the age of 30, he went out and he spread the message. He was baptized. And he, filled, and he was baptized in the Holy Ghost. And he went out, fasted and prayed and was tempted of the devil, but overcame. Actually, he proved to the world that he indeed was and is the son of the living God. Amen. And one that knew no sin, who became sin for us. You know what he did? 
He gathered together his disciples. He performed miracles. He preached the kingdom of God. He reached out to the lost and drew many people to him. He drew that group of disciples, Peter and John, James and Andrew, and the others. He drew men to him. He drew the woman at the well to him. He drew the woman committed, taken in adultery to him. He drew Nicodemus to him. He drew Zacchaeus to him. He drew a thief the day he was dying on the cross to him. He went out and he reached out and led many to him. He healed broken bodies. He healed blind Bartimaeus of blindness. The man by the pool, Bethesda, he healed him so he could walk again. Amen. He cast out demons, the demoniac of gatherings. He set free from demons as he did Mary Magdalene, cast out demons out of her and cast out demons out of many people. But you know what? His ultimate reason for here Coming here was to die for you and me. He went unto that cross. He paid the price. He died. He shed his life's blood for you and me. Why? So we can have life and that more abundantly. The only way we're going to have life and that more abundantly is to give it to Jesus. Now, Brother Roy, I know some saints who are miserable Sometimes they're going through some trials and tests. We all do it as a Christian. The Bible says they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So we will. Sometimes we get our eyes off the Lord. The Bible says, Isaiah 26, 3, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee because he trusteth in thee. Well, you first off must do, you must recognize your, your need, that you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Amen. For all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Amen. Then you must recognize Jesus for who he is, the way to heaven. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. As one black preacher who came from another nation, could speak very little English, would preach at FGBI when his turn came. There's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus. Only one way to be saved, and that's through Jesus. You know what? That's the best message you could preach. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you something, because there's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus. There's only one name under heaven whereby we must be saved, and that's the name of Jesus. Uh, today, sinner friend, you can have life and that more abundantly if you recognize Jesus is the only way. Not only the only way, but he died and he rose again from the dead. The Bible says, Romans chapter 10, 9, 10, For thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with a heart man belief unto righteousness, with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then you just need to repent of your sin. Amen. What's that godly sorrow? The type of sorrow. It's just not sorry because you got caught, not sorry because you're in trouble, but because you've broke the heart of God and you realize you've done wrong. Amen. And you're now repenting. Amen. Repent. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thought. Jesus said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. God have called all men everywhere to repent. After you feel godly sorrow, all you have to do is by faith receive him i'm not going to be long but i thank the lord december 7 1978 i found this life in christ i've had many ups and downs but i want to tell you something this morning it's been worth it because indeed he gives life 
and that more abundantly. As many as received him, to them gave he power, become the sons of God, even as many as believed on his name. Why not, sinner friend, receive him today? God bless you.